help right now, oh God. Touch and bless, oh God. Oh, even our sister Esther, oh God. Touch and touch our body, oh God. Touch our body, oh God. Heal in the name of Jesus, oh God. Her request, oh God. Heal right now, oh God. Touch, Lord, these bodies, oh God, that have been in pain, oh God. Touch and bless, oh God, these bodies, oh God, that have been sick, oh God, among us, oh Lord. We know you're able to touch, Lord. We're able to touch, oh God, and bless right now, Lord. We're able to touch right now, oh God. It's our desire, oh God, to seek your glory, oh God. It's our desire, oh God, to seek your face, oh God. Oh, Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you right now, oh God. Lord, bless our community, Lord. Touch and bless our community, oh God. This is the day, oh God, we think about, oh God. Those who we have lost, oh God. We think about those, oh God. Oh, thank you, Lord, that's been hurting among us, oh God. We ask you, Lord, to touch, Lord. We ask you to touch our neighbors, oh God. Touch our neighbors today, oh God. Touch them in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bless our neighborhood, oh God. Oh,
care, Lord. Save, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, God, we call your name today, oh, God. We thank you, oh, God, for this prayer time, oh, God. It's time we can come to you, oh, God. Open up this service today, oh, God, with our prayer and supplication before you, oh, God. We know now, oh, God, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. They that are called to this purpose. They are called praise of thee. They are called to give you everything, oh, God, that we have today, oh, God. Bless this service, oh, God. Bless this service, oh, God. Bless your people, oh, God. Turn us, oh, God, that we may know, oh, God, that we still find ourselves, oh, God, praising you, Lord. Oh, God, bless and touch, Lord, that family, oh, God. Bless and bless our families, oh, God. We call their names out today, oh, God. Their families, oh, God. Bless the James family, oh, God. Bless the Williams family, oh, God. Bless the Thomas family, oh, God. Oh, bless the Jones family, oh, God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the Ketchup family, oh, God. Bless the McKinney family, oh, God. Oh, bless, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. Bless the Gibson family, oh, God. Touch right now, oh, God. Touch right now, oh, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Bless the Johnson family, oh, God. Yeah, but that's the 
and gifts and sisters that would come up this time yes, and give us some, a praise song or two. We'll have the Lord leads them. Give us a praise song. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
us that are online today and you that are here with us in the sanctuary today. Oh, thank you. It's a revival time. I want you to shut in to let the Lord use it. Shut in to let the Lord bless us. Shut in to let God come in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless in his wonderful name. Hallelujah. This time, amen. We're just going to go right into the word of the Lord today because we're going to use most of our energy today just to sit and hear the word. So this time, I'm going to ask Elder Williams that he prepared himself. He's going to kick it off for us on today and let the Lord use you. Elder, we know how he wants to use you. Time is on your side today. And we want to see Elder, the white leaders. And we want to see Elder, the white leaders. As he's coming right now.
Now, the color purple stands for royalty. We stand for royalty. We have purple seats here in, in, in the sanctuary. And then you would probably see purple somewhere else, but it stands for royalty. So we are royal, praise God, and we are the heads and not the tails. We're above and not beneath. We are praying church. You know, and, and, and as I as I stopped right there, on my way to church, I was looking at, at so many people, so many homeless people that was just that's just yeah. out there. Yeah. This is the reason why that God has sent us to go out yeah. and to proclaim his gospel and to be able to to minister to them, to let them know that if God has done it for us. He can also do it for you also. Yeah, right. Amen. Okay, I'm going to say this. It says, okay, here we go. The law of E.F. E. Hutton. When Daniel speaks, people listen. When Daniel spoke, everyone listened. Why? People listen to Daniel for the following reasons. Number one. Relationships. People listen to us because of who we know. Daniel had a reputation for knowing God of Israel. Number two, sacrifice. People listen to us because of what we have suffered. Daniel gave up his right to eat the king's food. character. People listen to us because of our integrity. <coughs> Daniel remained blameless and trustworthy even when he had to rebuke kings. Reverence. People listen to us because we identify with their needs. Daniel lived with the Babylon, Babylonians and he identified with their struggles and lifestyle. We have people, people today, they have struggles with their lifestyles. Praise God. I have not seen so many haters on today behind the 49ers. But see, the thing of it is, is this. When you blessed, when you gifted, when you have what you know that you know that you've got, got to have. When you with God, God is not going to never leave us nor forsake us. He will not even have the righteous begging to pray. Uh -huh. Praise God. Because why? Because he loves us. And see, one thing that I can say, and I can say this with a pure heart. Yes. Pastor, keep doing what you're doing. Yes. Yes. Everybody ain't going to want to hear what we got to say. Oh, that's the reason why we got a speaker out there. Because that speaker can go a long way. And people can hear it. The Bible says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. The Spirit is going on right here on this corner. I don't care what nobody says. God has got our backs. He's here and he, he knows he knows what our future is. Yes, yes. He knows what's going to happen in the next 5 to 10 to 30 minutes. Oh, every minute, every second, every hour, every day, yes. every month, yes. every year. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good, so good. Yes, good. Yes. Number five. Yes. Insight. People listen to us because of what we know. Daniel could inter in interpret dreams and visions that confused everyone else. Why are we here? Who are we serving? When praises go up, the blessings come down. That's all we're going to be doing. Man. Yes. When we get to, to the streets of gold, we're not going to be doing 
nothing but praising and worshiping God. God does not have time for foolishness. Everybody say, yeah, well, uh, I'm not going to serve him. I don't know who he is. Well, you better get to know who he is. Because if you know like I know where he brought me from, what he's done for me when I was down and out, and he lifted me up, and he brought me to a, a higher ground, he brought me to a better place. There's no place better for me than being in the house of the Lord. Being able to hear what the elder has to preach or teach about. That's helping me. And I, as long as it's helping me, I'm loving it because it's going to lift me to a higher height and a deeper depth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Being on your knees when nobody else was on your knees. Thank you, Pastor, for praying while we sleep. Thank you, Pastor, for bringing, bringing a, 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 good, a good word. Thank you, Elder James, for what you do. Your labor will not be in vain. God's got you. He's got you. He's got you. That's why when you have the light of the Lord on you. You shine. This man's got a great shine on his face. Well, the man's got a great shine on his face because he's been reading the great shine word of God that will keep us. It will keep us. There's nothing out there in that world out there. The devil comes to do three things. He comes to steal. He comes to kill yes. and he comes to destroy. Yes. So why would you want the devil to destroy yes. all of the goodness and greatness that God has for yes. us? Yes. That God has put in us. Yes. Oh, that he'll never leave us no more. When you think that, when you think Hallelujah. that God is not with you, he's, you. There, he's there with you. He's not going to leave you nor forsake you. And all that are, all, all of us have sinned. We all have sinned. But the greatest is love. Love that Jesus has for us. I don't care what kind of condition you are in. God is able to do exceedingly and above. Praise God. He, when, you, when you're sick, He'll heal you. When you when you when you're down, he'll pick you up. When you're going through a surgery, he'll be your doctor, your surgeon in your surgery. Praise God. I know. I've been there and done that. I can remember at the times when my mother was on her on her uh, deathbed in Fairfield, California. Everybody knew. Planning on making arrangements. I don't believe, I believe God. Mm -hmm. I believe God has the last say so. Yes, yes, yes. Third day, her eyes opened. I didn't go, I didn't go, I didn't go. I didn't go nowhere. The third day, her eyes opened up and she lived 10 years after. And that was nothing but God. That was nothing but God. So, so like right now, even in my Facing different challenges and, and all that. Yeah. But, 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 God, God is right there with me. I would be a fool to turn around and look back and go back. No, I'm going forward. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. God is a miracle working God. He will, you know, yes, we all go through things. Yes, there's going to be deaths coming because we all got to leave here one day. But we have to keep our faith. We have to stand on God's promises. We have to be able to get up on our knees and get to praying because one thing I know if I don't know anything else, I know that prayer is the key. 
You got to pray just to make it through the day. Yes, you do. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Vulnerability. People listen to us because we are genuinely transparent. Yes. Yes. Da Daniel's life was an open book. Experiences. Experience. People listen to us because we've succeeded. Oh my God. That's a preach right there. We have succeeded in the past. Yes. Just looking the other day, just think just thinking how how everything was when we were coming up as coming up as kids. Mm -hmm. Went down to uh, what was at the altar. I didn't get up on I didn't get up on that uh, from this off to here, the mothers of the church is behind, behind most of our times at the altar. <laughs> and we would cherry for the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes. Praise God. And you don't get up until you, you have received mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, Pastor, the reason why I believe that we're still here and we're still here as a great church of God in Christ is because of the older saints that might not know they're probably no longer here but by them being by us being in their presence by us coming up underneath them it couldn't do nothing but make us as strong as we are right now with the power of the Holy Ghost Praise God. God is so good. Many a times I have cried by myself. But one thing I learned, Pastor, if I didn't learn anything else, I had to learn to encourage myself. I had to encourage myself. I can't give up for give up for what? I've got something. I got something the greatest that, that that's before me. I look at it, I got one of the greatest pastors in the world. I got a first lady, uh, uh, Jewel Johnson. Uh, hey, she right there. Jesus. Praise God. Jesus. Same way with you, Elder. Elder uh, All right. He says, Hallelujah. I am not going to give up on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Because you are great, anointed, yes. and appointed, yes. man of God. Yes. Hallelujah. So I'm like, I, hey, I love it, man. Stay on my, stay on my helmet. Because I know when you get on my helmet, it's for a good reason. Yes. <laughs> Praise, God. Praise God. Okay, humility. People listen to us when we incarnate meekness. We just want to say that, uh, being meek, meek and humble. I deal with, I deal with, I have clients that have mental, uh, mental, mental illness. So I have to stay prayed up. I can't go to work. I can't go to work without praying. Uh, because I deal with the Asians, but then again too, when I when I when I go to them, I go to them with love. Because I said to myself, I said, well, you know, what you're saying, you know, that could be you. That's right. You know, but you know, that's why it's it's good to continue to pray and stay in your word. Yes. And I teach them. I pray for them. I lay hands on, them, pray for them, and give them and sit down and we go into the Bible. What, what best? I would be, I would be wrong if I didn't able, if I wasn't able to do that. Mm -hmm. But I am glad that I can do that. Yeah. That my job do allow me to do that. Because sometimes you go to, you can't bring the Bible with you. Yes. Amen. That's right. yeah. Okay. Competence. People listen to us because of our abilities and expertise. Daniel did many things better than anyone else. I want to stop there. I'm going to stop right here for a second. A young man that has a lot that he's dealing with at this present time. Uh, he 
It's very challenging. God has, God has gifted you. He's got a lot of prayers on him right now. Now, this is how I'm looking at it. I'm looking like if Brock Purdy goes in there in the game, in the game, because a lot of people don't think he's he's nothing because he's he's a, he's a rookie. He's a rookie for a while, but if he goes to do what he knows he needs to do tomorrow. Not only him because he's not the only. He's not the only player. It's, it's called teamwork. Mm -hmm. They go in there and they do what they got to do to defeat them lions. Mm -hmm. See, in order for you to defeat a lion, don't get me wrong, a lion can be defeated. Mm -hmm. It's just that you got to know how to go about defeating that lion. Mm -hmm. But I believe that he's going to, I believe he's going to win it. I believe they're going to win it. And then if, we, and then if he don't, you guys come back to uh, help me. They didn't win. I'll, 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 I'll confess to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying this. He's going to, he's dealing with a situation where some people don't believe that he gonna, he's going to win. Mm -hmm. But we are winners. We're not losers. We're not losers. And they're going to go. They're going to do what they got to do. And there's a lot of people that's going to be, they're going to say, wow. You know, first, they're gonna, first word they're going to bring out is luck. They were like, there's no such thing as luck. Stop saying that. Oh, I'm lucky. No, you're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed going, you're blessed coming. Praise God. Amen. Okay, into my um, getting ready to finish this race here. Competence. People listen to us because of our abilities and expertise. Daniel did many things better than anyone else. The last, but not least, courage. People listen to us because we demonstrate conviction. Daniel was so, Daniel was no one's puppet and showed he would die for his commissions. Amen. May the Lord have a blessing to the man. Of his Amen.
And, but you know, some people have gone through some things mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. And the nose needs to know that, you know, they not can only we can encourage them, but they can also encourage us. Yes. Let us know what we've been through. We're not by ourselves, but we're not alone. And they're not alone because we're constantly praying for them. So this time we ask that all of the child catcher would come in his own way. Yes. Amen. You see him? Yes. Amen. Come on, say amen. 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 amen.
are you God? And she used to say, he was like, well, he's lucky to be here. And my grandma said, one more time, I'm going to tell you, we don't give off love, we give off blessings. Yes, yes. Going on later on in my life, they always say you got their chosen child. They call it the black sheep, but the chosen child. I'm the one that everybody comes to when there's a problem. But here's a problem. I'm the baby of the family. But I'm the one everybody runs to. Um, lost my grandmother in 2016. No, lost my dad's grandmother, mom, 2015. My grandmother, 2016. My daughter, 2017. My stepdad, 2018. My dad, 2019, my mom, 2020. That is not mentioned in all the other people that I've lost in between. Them. And I had to ask myself, I'm like, God, why, 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 what's up? Like, what you doing? Like, you trying to kill me? You trying to break me home fast? And then I had to stop to think with the thought of Jewel Johnson. That woman right there, thank God for her. All right, thank you, Lord. But I'm going to say this. This man right here, I remember when my mom was transitioning, I called Pastor at 2, I want to say, 2, 30. He said, I'm on my way. He got there exactly at 2.50. Talked to my family for a minute, then we sent my mom home at 2.59. That's when she took her last breath when the pastor showed us. I went through a spiritual struggle in that process. A strong spiritual struggle. Because I was getting angry again. Because yes. it was a lot of pressure. And then again, like I said, I'm the baby. So everybody comes to me and says, well, what are we going to do? Oh, and it's like, what are we going to do? I, I'm the youngest. I, I don't know. Jesus, Jesus. But you always the one that has the friends and good places. And you know everybody and everybody loves you respects you. I said, yeah, that's true. Because that's the way God made me to be. I tell my kids all the time, my daughter had asked me something and she said, Dad, why every time you need something or every time it seems like you're not going to be able to do something, you're always able to do something. And I used to ask my grandma that. And she said, honey, keep living and keep praying and you'll see how God works. Sometimes he does not work when we need them to work. And I say that to say his work comes in many different ways. His work could be that your bills you make, your bills is more than your money. But your blessing is coming because now you're making more money as a promotion. You get what you you get what you put in. I've always told people prayer without work is dead. Uh -huh. yes. You can't say, yes. I want a relationship with God, but I sit at home and watch church on TV. Well, mm -hmm. I'd be confused by that. I've told people this many times, even on my pod, or even on our podcast. If you feel like that, then you can sit at home and uh, turn on a club on your TV and go to the club on your TV, but you don't do it. So why would you treat God like he's less than the club and the people you're around? And I had to, when telling people that, and this is funny, because when you tell people things that you thought you really didn't know, they used to say, when you don't think you know something, it'll pop up when it needs to pop up. God will give it to you when he needs to give it to you. Um, so now that I'm starting to release, because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm carrying that burden, still carrying that burden for a lot of people in my family. Got to. I'm starting to release. I'm starting to release. Even when people seem like they want to steal, I just look at them. But I know I'm starting to release because I used to watch my grandma walk around the house and clean up the house and be humming them old spiritual animals. Yes, I was doing that the other day when I was cleaning. My son walked in and said, Dad, what are you doing? I 
I said I'm finding my strength in God. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Sometimes when you lose your strength, yes. you got to go back to the old school. Yes. And then we wondered why our grandparents were so blessed. Yes. Because yes. they were praying as they was yes. cleaning. Hallelujah. They was praying as they was getting dressed. Hallelujah.
Yeah, I mean, 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 I said, when you're going through something, somebody next to you may be going through something, y'all rub elbows together, and you, and you might feel that spirit come out of them. Hey, that's the best thing you could ever have. Yes, So my message is for everyone. Understand your strength. Understand your prayer. And stay inside it. When things get difficult, things don't look up, things seem like it's about to fall. Mm -hmm. Stop going to man mm -hmm. and go to God. Go to God.
superintendent amen, amen, in the Court of Bates, our, our Bible um, Institute amen. that we have on Tuesday nights. If you want to tune in on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock, Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock right now, Tuesday nights at 6 o'clock right now in our Bible amen. Institute hour. And we'll begin a whole series of um, lessons um, from our Bible um, instructions on Tuesday night, this coming Tuesday night. So be a part of that on Tuesday night right here. You don't have to go anywhere. You know where to be right here at the New Life Christian Fellowship Church of God in Christ. Again, we welcome you. We welcome you to this revival, to this consecration, to this shut-in, to where God has been blessing. And to where we've been hearing miracles already, how God is moving, and how God's healing, and how God is setting free, how God's uplifting spirits. How we thank you for joy, full and complete. Amen. I'm looking over here, and I see my sister walk in. How you? She said she was sick and not feeling good earlier, but she walked in kind of good, looking kind of well there. Oh, thank you, my sister Esther. Come on, stand up. Stand up, sister Esther. How you? Stand up. How you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stand up right now. I told you I was going to pray for you when you got here. Stand up. How are you? Because you said you're feeling much better right now. Stand up. How are you, dear Lord? I thank you for my sister. I thank you, O oh God, for her making her way to the Saints Hospital. Yes, I thank you, O oh God, she felt much better coming in. I said, Lord, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. The victory is mine. I'm going to be all right. And I know God is in my health and he's in my strength. And God is doing it for me right now. I believe it, O oh God. I believe it. It shall be done. I believe it, O oh God. It shall be done right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 Jesus, that they will be encouraged to go on 
a little bit further. We ask all these blessings in your name, your son, Jesus Christ. Thank God. Thank you. Amen. 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 Please uh, stand for uh, the reading of God's word. Um, like I, once again, I said, I'll come from Acts, the 16th chapter, uh, the 17th verse. Amen. The 20th, 16th chapter, 20 through 31st verse. Excuse me. And brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loose. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thou house. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of God. Amen. Thank you. We're talking about Paul and Silas, two men who dedicated their lives to God, yes. who went through a lot of tumultuous times in their lives. But they knew who they were coming to. They knew their job and their responsibility. Paul, when he was on that Damascus road, he was knocked off the beast. And, and God had to speak to him. He said, at that time, his name was Saul. He said, Saul, 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 why persecuted thou me? And he said, Lord, who art thou? He said, the, the Lord Jesus, the one who you persecuted. In other words, he would, uh, the apostle Paul was bringing the people of God to the Roman authorities, bound and chained, thrown in prison, even killed and murdered on, in, uh, in times like these. And for a word and for a, uh, a title of, the, uh, lesson, of this uh, sermon, are you committed to God in time of revival? Mm -hmm. This is a revival time. This is a time that we have to give our hearts and our minds back to God. This is a time that we have to forget about the past and let God do the healing. The word committed is defined as a pledge or commitment to someone. What were you committed to in 2023? Now we end the year 2024. We should have new, a new commitment, new aspirations, a new sense of service to God yes. and His Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. Were you just committed to yourself, someone else, or were you committed to nothing? Mm -hmm. You just sat by the wayside and did nothing. My children are here. They can testify how their father was. Mm. I was in church, one foot in church, one foot in church, and I was out of church. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I treated them wrong. I treated their mother wrong. Mm. I repented and asked them to forgive me. But I wasn't in my right mind. But when I got more into God's word, there was a change that 
came about. I still had to deal with issues that I had. I had to deal with my anger. I had to deal with my depression. I had to deal with my anxiety. I had to deal with frustration. Even though sometimes I still get frustrated. But I know how to step back, take a deep, deep breath, and let it go. Because so, sometimes when I don't let it go, I hurt other people. That's why I ask the question, are you committed to God and, and in a time of revival? Where is your life right now? Do you have a life in Christ? Are you just going to church day in, day out, and there's no change about you? Are you in church and saying, hey, I'm okay? Or your eyes focus on who's in the church and what they're doing instead of putting your focus and attention on God? When you're committed to God, and committed to the word of God, the word comes to change you. The word comes to mold you and reshape you in the image of God because he was created in his image and in his likeness. Genesis 1, 27. As a believer, we are committed to God's precepts, judgment, and his ways. We made resolutions in this new year, but it didn't line up with the will and purpose of God for our lives. Yes. It didn't line up because of our relationship. We do not have a relationship with God. We say we do. If we have a relationship with God, he said, if you love me, yes. keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Um, if you love God, who you don't see, Keep his commandments because his commandments are not grievous. They come to build you and I up, to make us better, to make us stronger, to encourage us, to equip us to do the will of God. But it's only when you have that relationship with Jesus Christ. You'll be able to be committed to the things of God. Paul and Silas was committed to the work of the Lord. In doing so, they brought to the magistrate, they was brought to the magistrate because Paul cast out the devil in the woman who made much gain for her masters. Mm -hmm. See, this was a soothsayer. This soothsayer made a lot of money for her masters. Uh -huh. They was using her de 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 uh, devil um, attributes so sorcery attributes to gain money from those who wasn't aware that she was nothing more than a witch. She was using witchcraft. And she troubled Paul and Silas while they was coming to town. They told uh, the woman, told uh, Paul and Silas, uh, told the people all about them. They told them um, who they are and what they are, why they're here and so forth. And it frustrated Paul, where he got tired of it and he rebuked the enemy that was in her, which was that of the devil. When you're going through your, your problems and your situations, when you're coming up against somebody who's they're out of their mind, then that is the time you start rebuking that enemy because that is what Jesus did when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights. He put the word, the living word, put the written word on the devils. He did. And he said, you know, uh, break, <clears throat> excuse me. Let, me, let me, let me slow down. Mm -hmm. Let me slow down. Mm -hmm. I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. Seated out of the mouth of God. 
is the word of God that strengthens you. It's the word of God that encourages you and equips you to hold on in these trying times. You may not believe it will, but until you try him for yourself, yes. try him for yourself, you don't know what God will do for you. Because I get up, I pray for all my children. Yes. All my children. I pray for my grandchildren, even my great grandchildren. Because I know what God can turn around. We're staying in the atmosphere. I know what God can turn around and for our good. But when we have to put our trust, we have to be committed to God to allow God to straighten out the situation. See, one day is equivalent to a thousand years, uh -huh. okay? It can happen like snapping a finger, or it might be a year, five years, ten years. But what we are supposed to do, if we are committed in God's word and committed to him, is continue on our path, looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. Even though they were whipped, thrown in prison, they kept the faith. Yes. They didn't have a pity party yes. and a woo -hoo, uh, woo is uh, woo is me, uh -huh. wow is me uh, attitude. They began to pray and sing songs of praise to God and rejoice. As they rejoiced and praised God for this situation, there was an earthquake that shook the prison cells, and the cells came open, and their shackles were loosened. The prison guard became worried because of his charge to keep watch over the prisoners. And if any had escaped, that would be his life. Yes, yes, yes. And as the jailer was beginning to take his life, the apostle Paul cried out, Sir, sir, we all here. Don't do yourself no harm. See, when you are a man and woman of God, and you have, when he's talking about a reputation, mm -hmm. you are going to stand and even though you've been locked up, you've been lied on, you've been talked about, you've been cheated on, mm -hmm. you're going to stand for God. Because Paul had a heart and a passion for that man. He knew that man was a sinner. He knew that man, that uh, jailer didn't know Jesus Christ in a part of his sins. But it's when you have that relationship, when you come to know him, ah, in a part of your sins, and have a, a deep understanding of God's word, you will rejoice and be glad in it. But here it is, the jailer turned around and said, ask, what must I do to be saved? My question to you, what do you need to do to be saved? Mm -hmm. Is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that Father God raised him from the dead yeah. on the third day according to the scriptures. Repent and confess. Yeah. That's what you have to do with your mouth. Mm -hmm. For with your heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 19. That's what you have to do. And believe in your heart that Father God forgave you of your sins. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about a committed life. Yeah. A committed life to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Giving everything to him. Not leaning on your own understanding, yeah. but on the understanding of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. At that moment, the, I already said, the jailer asked, you know, what must I do to be saved? People everywhere is looking for at you and I. Are we living the God-given lifestyle in front of those who see us in our homes, the grocery store, the gas station, etc. We have to remember we represent God himself, and I am talking about believers. If you don't have a relationship, you don't know what I'm talking about. It is our relationship with Jesus Christ. We have to make sure 
that we exhort, show Christ all the time. No matter what we go through. So God, see, Jesus said we will go through trials and tribulations. And when we go through those trials and tribulations, they come to work patience. They build us up by hope. It builds us up by assurance and know that God hears our prayers. And God is turning that situation around. We can't act like the world. We have been set apart for our master's use, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We can't act all holy in church and full of the devil. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Our mind has to be renewed each day with God's word. Woo. When we remind our, you know, renew our mind with God's word, we know where God wants to take us. We know the path that he wants to lead us. But if we're not in the word of God, we have no direction. We have nowhere to go. We are helpless without God's word. We are helpless without the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that comes to enable us, to equip us, to empower us to do the will, the divine will of God. We either come clean or we're going to stay away dirty. In other words, either you're going to act right or you're going to still be ugly. You choose this day whom you're going to serve. You're either going to serve God or you will serve the devil, which is the master on this earth. But we have to remember that God is the devil's boss. The devil cannot do nothing to you unless God allows it and permit it. Ask Job. Job was a man who assured evil. He still he was upright. He did no evil. That's why God can talk so much about him. Because Job was right in the eyesight of God. But the devil asked, you know, God, you know, to remove that hedge mm -hmm. from around him. Yes. And I will make him curse you. Mm -hmm. Job went through a lot. Mm -hmm. But he stood firm uh -huh. on God's word. <clears throat> Even though he was a, a righteous man, a holy man, yes. he had issues like you and I. Mm -hmm. He even challenged God at, at his word. And God had to come back and spank him and say, hey, can you count the stars in the sky? Did you create the heavens and the earth? Did you do all this? We should never really misrepresent God. We should love God for who he is. He is our loving Savior. He will do anything and everything for you if you just turn your life over to him. Commitment. What are you going to commit yourself to in 2024? Are you going to commit yourself to the word of God, yes. through prayer, through fasting, yes. and standing still and waiting until he talks back to you. We have a lot of problems and issues because we will not give it to God. Yes. He said to catch all our cares upon him, he will give us the rest. Yes. We can rest in God. We can rest in Jesus because he went on that cross and he died for you and I. For you and I. You don't have to carry all that. You don't have to be burdened down with all the problems. Like Elohim's and Brother John kept talking about. You don't have to be. Give it to Jesus. Let him be the author and the finisher of your faith. Let him be the one that will straighten it out. Let him be the one that show you his mighty hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 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 
Yes. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul. Oh, yes. Yes. He was told by Jesus himself. You are going to suffer a many things uh -huh. for my name's sake. Uh -huh. For my name's sake. <laughs> when he was knocked off of that beast on that Damascus road, on, Jesus visited him. Yes, yes, he did. Jesus visited him. Yes. Because Jesus knew what the Apostle Paul had in him. Yeah. God knows what you have in yourself. So he just wants you to rise up and give it all to him. Let him lead and direct your path in a path of holiness, in a path of righteousness, a path of loving kindness and meekness, temperance, to give you all those attributes so you can live a peaceful life. Yeah, a lot of us are still hurting from faith, from past things. Mm -hmm. But when we give it to God and let him work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling, I guarantee you, he will make it out all right. Yes. He will turn that situation yes. around for you. You're good. But he's not going to break in. You have to give it to him. You got to let him handle it. You get out of the way so God can have his way and watch him work in your life. I, I, I used to tell people, you know, uh, some of my friends, I said, hey man, why you, why you doing all that drinking? Man, I've I done, I done, I done all the drinking for you. But I'm telling you right now, I have no desire to drink. I know I have no desire to do the former things that yes. I was accused of. Come on now. That I did. Thank you, and Lord. This life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, God forgave Thank me. You, Lord. Yes, yes. I know He forgave Thank me. You, Lord. But I know what I had to do. I had to learn how to forgive myself yes. Yes. for the things that I did. Thank you, Lord. I had to learn. Yes. I had to let go and let God. What about y'all? Mm -hmm. What is you holding that you think you can't give it to God and think that God yes. won't forgive you? Yes. Hey, we've all been hurt. We've all been hurt. But until we give it to God and let God work it out, have that committed relationship with Him, we're going to still be hurt. We're going to still be seeking something else to fill that void. That, that empty hole, the empty spot that's, that's, that's inside you. Nothing is going to fill it up but God's love for you. I had a hole. I had a void. I had to get it filled. When I became committed to the things of God, oh, He restored my joy. Yes, yes, he put that peace. Yes. He gave me the understanding of His glory. Yes, yes, yes. He showed His grace and His mercy. Yes, yes, yes. Over me. He would do it for each and every one of you yes, here right yes, now. Yes, yes, but you yes. gotta let it go. Hallelujah. You gotta give it to Him. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, Hallelujah. it's hard in yourself, you, but it's not Lord. hard in God. Thank you, Jesus. Believe me. Jesus. Jesus. And that's why, you know, I stand here today. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Being committed. Yes. You got to let it come. Being committed. Yes. You got to let God resolve Hallelujah. the issues. Hallelujah. Being committed. Hallelujah. You have to be forgiving. Yes. You have to be loving. You have to appreciate what God is doing for you. Yes, yes, yes. Even when I was diagnosed with possible cancer. My God, Jesus. I, I rebuked that in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I had blood coming out of me. Yes, oh God, Jesus. 
And I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm here as a witness to tell you. Yes. I don't believe no more. Hallelujah. And I believe I'm going to be here. Yes. And when I go and have that cystoscopy, yes. it's only going to prove what I already know. What's yes. happening. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That is what I stand on. Yes. That is where my belief is. Everything 
that God commanded them to do. But they weren't perfect like uh, by no stretch of the imagination. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's only what we do for Christ is going to last. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So make up your mind today, yes. Yes. right now, mm -hmm. what you're going to do with your life. Thank you. Because if you continue down this path, a path of unrighteousness, uh -huh. a path of unholiness, a road of destruction, hell is going to where you're going to open up your eyes. And I don't want to see nobody go to hell. Where it's going to be reaping and gnashing of teeth. Where you're going to be tormented each and every day. Commit your life to Christ. Christ. Let him be the author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. Lean and depend on him like never before. And I guarantee you, you'll have a crown of life. God bless. Amen. to come to him. Yeah. God wants us to come to him. 
him. Yes, Hallelujah. You may be saved. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not, I'm not indicting anybody. But it's more strength that we can gain. We are here in consecration. Amen. We are consecrating our lives to the Lord. We're giving of ourselves. Hallelujah. I've set my plate aside. I ain't ate nothing since Thursday. Y'all looking at me? Yes, I have not eaten anything. Even le leading up to. Yes, yes. Even leading up to this weekend. We have been pushing our plates back every day. Praying for God's people. Because we need to hear. We need to hear from God. We need a miracle. Hallelujah. This world is turned upside down. And we need the spirit of the Lord. We need God. We need God. And that's why we're in here. We're sanctifying and sacrificing. I'm asking God to create in me a clean heart. Hallelujah, Jesus. And renew a right spirit in me. It is not about you. It is not about pastor. It is not about anybody else. This is, this is personal. When it gets personal, when we get personal with God, when we say, God, I want to be committed to you. Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you in these situations. I need God. I need God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Even in my weakness, people make us strong. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's going to make us strong if we depend on him. God wants us to depend on him. Hallelujah. Our faith. Hallelujah. Faith. Mustard seed faith. Hallelujah. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you may not be able to see a mustard seed. But if you just have faith, walking in faith. Hallelujah. I walk by, walk by faith and not by sight. I don't see what's going to happen to me tomorrow. I don't even know what's going to happen to me this evening uh -huh. yeah. before the night is over. Yeah. We don't know what is going to happen, yeah. but it's of his goodness. It is of his mercy that we are not consumed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. His compassion, they fail not. Yeah. They are new every morning. Yeah. We received a new mercy this morning when he blessed us to get up out of our bed. I couldn't get up as quickly as I normally do today because I was hungry. Like the little kids say, I'm hungry. I was hungry. But I began to just think on the goodness of Jesus. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you, hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. My soul cries out. Get the benediction. Don't leave before the benediction. And I believe our benediction is here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants to do something. I am so godly proud. Hallelujah. Of Deacon John Ketchum. I'm speaking those things that are not as they go on, as though they are. Thank God for it. When he came to this church, I thank God. I thank God for that young man. I didn't know his story. Pastor didn't know his story. But I tell you what he was doing. He was beating them drums. Somebody else brought him here. That's why it's so important for us to bring them in. Bring them to the house of God. If we have a friend that has a problem, bring them to the house of God. Tell them that God can work it out. Jesus can work it out. We know Jesus is a God. He's a heart fixer. He's a mind regulator. If your mind is not right, Jesus can do it. But the Lord sent him here, and he would beat them drums. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell your business now, Brother John. He would beat them drums, and then he'd go out on the church on the side of the sidewalk, and he light it up. He light it up, and the Lord gave me to tell him. 
Brother, you can't do that on the side of the house because you are standing on holy ground. Hallelujah. You're standing on holy ground. And he respected that in me because I went to him in love. I admonished him. Whatever we do with people, we have to do it in the spirit of love. We have to speak love. Speak truth, but speak love. And he, he said, all right, my, all right, first lady. And then he went walking down the street. He took it and he went down the street. See, a lot of times, because we don't, we don't exercise our authority in God, the enemy still tampers with us. And he walked it down the street. And then a few weeks later, he wouldn't he didn't do it no more on the sidewalks. He didn't do it right, right as you look outside the window. He wouldn't do it anymore. But then he came to me and he said, he said, he started calling me mama. He didn't call me first lady no more. And when he called me mama, I said, all right, God, I see you. I see you. And I begin to speak in his life. And they begin to talk about, even on today, our ministers talked about, our elders talked about Paul and Silas. But I had an experience and I told him, I said, you remind me so much of my brother. I got a brother who has the same mannerism, temper, and just the same demeanor as he had. And I told him, I told my parents, my mother and father, and I'm testifying right now, told my mother and father, I said, God told me to tell you mom and daddy, and my daddy was an ordained elder. My mother was a licensed missionary. And I told them, I said, God sent me to speak a word and to tell you that he's no, hard, he's no harder than Saul. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a Damascus Road experience. Aww. I'm going to save him. Mom and daddy is gone. They're gone. But I believe God is working something out in my brother. Because when he calls me and asks me, sister, I need prayer. My, my husband, brother, I need prayer. We've been praying for him. Believe in God. But I told Brother John, I said, I'm going to say this to you too. I see something in your spirit. And I told him, I said, you are, God is going to save you. You're no harder than, than Saul. You're going to put all of that away. Well, I'm here to tell you today. Hallelujah. Can I get a praise in the house? Hallelujah. 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 He done threw them sticks away. He ain't got no sticks. He don't walk in the church smelling like sticks. Y'all know what sticks are. Hallelujah. And I thank God. I thank God for what he's doing. I'm looking at you. And I think about what Bishop Blake says. And Bishop Blake always said, I see you in the future. And you look much better than your past. Don't let the enemy bind you and shackle you. He wants to bind us. He wants to shackle us. He wants us to not do the will of God. God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And we have to tell the Lord, Lord, seek him. Seek him and say, God, what do you want me to do? What is it? If it means I've been going right, and I think I'm going right, but God says, no, you need to go left. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God says it, then we have to be obedient to the Spirit of God. We have to be obedient to God's Word. And I told Pastor, I said, God is doing something. He's shifting the atmosphere. He's shifting the atmosphere. When we go through something, we're hurting. We're hurting. I'm thinking about on last year. I lost a sister, a sister dear to me. You know it's bad when you lose somebody and you sleep in the same bed with them. And I lost my sister. And it was, it was even different than mom and daddy because when mom and daddy passed, they just slept away peacefully. They didn't exude any pain. They were not in pain. But to see somebody, to see a person that you love deep in your heart, to see them struggling to breathe, struggling with the pain, pain, 
from the top, not even able to articulate to you, I'm in pain. But you know what? God had to do something in me. Even through that, he said, you get in the press. I wanted to just give up the depression. Depression. Not just depression, but the grief. We don't grieve. We need to, grieving is normal. What did Jesus do when Lazarus died? He cried. He wept. He wept. And sometimes we try to be so strong. We try to walk around and act like we all of that. And I ain't going to say that cliche to it. But we try to act like we're all of that, but we're not. But I could get up. I couldn't feel. I, could, I, I was like, Lord, I can't feel your presence. I need to feel you. I need your strength. God, I need your strength. I need your strength. I need your strength. I'm praying internally. I'm praying personally. We had prayer Monday and Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. when COVID started. The Lord gave me to start that prayer. And I would get up every, I didn't miss a morning. I didn't miss a morning with praying with the saints. But I got to the point last year, towards the end of the year, I couldn't even pray. I couldn't even, I couldn't pray for anybody because I needed prayer. Amen. Sometimes we need to just recognize yes. that we need God. Mm -hmm. Pastor said, don't worry about it. I thank God for having a good husband who Amen. knew and could feel my cares. He knew that wasn't his wife. I ain't never not just, and you know what? I just, I would just, I, I, I would go into a deep sleep. Uh -huh. I would wake up in the morning at three o'clock in the morning, and I'm sharing this because somebody needs to hear it. I would wake up at three in the morning, and I toss and I turn, and I pray and I say, God, God, you ministered to me. I needed the Lord to minister to me. And I prayed and I prayed, and I would just pray, but when six o'clock came, I didn't have the strength to get out of bed. You know what I did? I would roll over and then a deep, I'd go into a deep sleep. But I could feel the presence of God. I could feel, I could feel the spirit of God in my home because pastor was praying. Amen. He was praying. The elders, the missionaries, the mothers, Mother McKinney, I thank you for your prayers. All the saints everywhere who would tell me, First Lady Jewel, I got a sister girl network, and they would say, I'm praying for you. Prayer is the key. Amen. Amen. Prayer, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer. Amen. And I would pray to the Lord secretly in my secret closet. We all got to have a secret closet. We got to have one because that's where you go and the Lord will minister to you. The Lord will speak to you like he's not speaking to everybody else. And whatever he speaks to you, then that's what we have to do. We have to listen to the voice of the Lord. And I say, God, I thank you. At the end of the year, the month started to pass by. Right before Christmas, I lost two aunts. The last aunt on my mama's side, the last aunt on my daddy's side. And I said, oh, I said, I got to shake this. I got to shake this. Because see, the enemy will know when you're trying to pull your way out of a circumstance and a situation, and he's going to come back after you with a vengeance. He's going to come after you. Don't ever, you better know your adversary, the devil. You don't know the devil, you better understand. He will come in a person. He will come in a situation. He'll attack your finances. Hallelujah. And God was blessing us. God gave us a blessing, financial blessing. We weren't expecting it. But I tell you what, that still didn't do it for me. That did it, because money is not, money don't solve it. We're looking at people now who are rich, they got money, 
They got money. And what are they doing? They taking pills. They taking medication. They taking whatever they taking. And the next thing you know, you hear they done committed suicide. They done done this or they done done that. And what do they do? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose your soul? And I said, God, I will not. I will not bow the bell. Uh -huh. I ain't bow to nobody. But God said, Jesus, Jesus, the keeper of my soul. He's the keeper of my soul. When you want to be kept, and if you want to be kept, hallelujah, Jesus will keep you. He's a keeper. And I thank God. And the beginning of the year came, and I started feeling better. Started feeling better. One of the members said, First Lady, I was going to come and get you. <laughs> sure enough. But I tell you what, I had not lost out. I had not lost my faith. I just said, God, I need a pick me up. How many need a pick me up? How many have been honest with God and said, I need God, you need to pick me up. Pick me up, sorry. That's my God baby right there. Pick me up. When all else fails, we know we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who will lift us. He will lift us. He will carry us. He'll be unto be to you what nobody else can be. Amen. That preacher right there, he's sitting there, but he ain't God. Amen. He is not God. My hope lies in Jesus. My hope lies in God. And if I don't, if if I don't ever, if I don't ever, if I don't ever. See what's going on around me, I don't care because I know my faith is moving me forward. We've got to move forward. Stop looking at the past. In 2023, all of us went through something. I'm just saying what I went through. Y'all ain't saying what y'all went through, but you done been through some things. But you know what? We can't continue to look back. Mm. Hallelujah. We can't look back because the past don't do nothing for you anyway. Amen. Don't do nothing but make you put the cover over your head and get up under the pillow and say, I can't do it. But when we get in the press, like the woman with the issue of blood, she had a disease in her body. She had it for 12 long years. She had it. But you know what? She heard about a man. Somebody out there listening outside this door. They hearing about a man today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're hearing about a man. Come see a man. For all of you on social media, come see a man. Hallelujah, Jesus. And she began to press away. How many know when we get in the press, the press is not easy. It's not easy. Sometimes you gotta strip off the old. I can strip this sweat off. Strip it off, you gotta throw it to the side. You gotta throw it to the side. All the shackles, the shackles. I can take these shackles off and I can throw them on the floor. Shackles, they're shackled. People are shackled in their minds. I can understand why Bishop Mason used to say, God cast Satan out of the minds. Our leader, our founder, that was his prayer. Cast Satan out of the mind. We got to cast Satan out of our minds. I'm not saying because we say he don't come to our minds. But we got to keep our minds stayed on Jesus. God said he'll keep you in perfect peace. Hallelujah, glory to God. If you keep your mind, stay on him. Not me. Not the boss at the job because he's going to give you a check. But keep your mind on God. That woman got into the press. She began to press her way. I can imagine when she started pressing her way, the people who knew what she had was like, see, 
Don't do this to you. Uh -huh. yes. They step over. Mm -hmm. They step over to the side of you. Sometimes they'll even step over you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They step over you. I can imagine her pressing, but she was focused on Jesus. Uh -huh. She was focused. She knew that man could deliver her. Yeah. She knew it. She knew it. And regardless of what your situation is, press on. Press on. Get the chatter out of your ears. Everybody got a word. Everybody saying this. They saying that. They saying this. Saying that. Everybody know everybody's business. That ain't me. I don't care. You can come to me and just say, I need prayer. I ain't gonna ask you what it is. Uh -huh. I'm not, because I have a relationship with God. Uh -huh. All I do is call your name out and say, God, you know what it is. God, you know what it is they're dealing with. Lord Jesus, you, you work a miracle. You turn it around. That's why that song came to me. He'll turn it around for your good. He'll turn it around for you. And I'm saying, God, turn it around for your people. If you're struggling, whatever it is, ask God, turn it around. God, you turn it around. Turn it around for me. God, I need you today. I need a miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I can remember my daughter was sitting here last night, and she got up and testified, but she didn't get a real testimony. She gave a real testimony. But I'm talking about when the doctors called us in 20 years ago and said she got a brain tumor. She's got a cancerous tum tumor between a sinus and her brain. And I can remember the doctors telling me. And I could have sat there, and if I didn't have God, I would have sat on my seat and said, uh -huh. <laughs> I would have done it. But if I didn't know, that's if I didn't know God. Yes. Because that's what people do when they don't know God. Yes. But the spirit of the Holy Ghost yes. stirred up in me. Hey, glory to God. And I stood up and I looked at the doctor in the eyes. Elder James, I know what you're saying. I looked him in the eyes and I told him, I said, the God that I serve yes. is going to heal my daughter. And when he does it, don't you forget to tell this doctor of yours. When he does it, you gonna know who did it. Because she had a rare cancer, a tumor between her sinus and brain. It was something that was not common in the African American community. I asked the doctor, how did she get it? I'm gonna tell y'all what the doctor told me. The doctor told me that somebody was carrying the Epstein-Barr virus, and they sneezed. Y'all hear me? Y'all looking at me too. They sneezed, and she was in their presence, and she breathed it up her nose, and it never expelled. That's how she got it. And she started to have nosebleeds. Never had a nosebleed in her life. And my antennas, you know how mamas do. Our antennas go up when there's something odd with our children. My antennas went up. I said, you ain't never had no nosebleed. I am taking you to the doctor. And I took her to the doctor, took her to the emergency room. Pastor and I had checked her into the dormitories at Uni University of San Francisco. I said, I'm picking you up today. Get ready. I done got on the 101 and drove into San Francisco and picked her up. And when I took her to ER, the ER doctor looked up there and he said, there's something there, but I want you to go see a specialist. And see, we know that God specializes. He sent her to a specialist that day. We didn't have to wait 10 days, 20 days, 30 days. That day, he sent her, and he went up there and he looked, and he said, she has a nasal polyp, and I'm gonna do her. And that's when he did what he did. He 
did it on a Tuesday. By that Friday, we had the diagnosis. We had it. And I sat in his office. And I believe God to this day, women of God, men of God, when you commit to a prayer time, pray. God would wake me up every morning and I was still employed. We were living in Fremont and I was employed in San Francisco. And I would get on the bar at the Fremont bar because that's the beginning of the train. And I get on the bar and I would get on the bar and go into the city. And I said, God, you know. And one day I drove in and the enemy attacked me and he wanted me to believe that what I had told the doctor wasn't going to happen. I'm in the car by myself driving. The tears coming down. I'm snotting. They coming down and I'm screaming at the devil. Satan, you are a liar. Satan, I bind you. I rebuke you. Because God is going to bring it. God is going to heal her. He's the ultimate healer. And I began to watch God. God woke me up every morning at 2 o'clock in the morning, and pastor can witness to it, I creep out of bed, and I go in the living room. And oftentimes in, I would be lying prostrate before the Lord, asking God for a miracle. God, you're a miracle working God. Yes, sir. And when I asked him what he did, everything they said was going to happen, just the opposite happened. They said she wouldn't be able to smell. Well, God heightened her sense of smell. I'm taking her to the doctor. And she said, Mama, what's that smell? And I'm like, I don't know. I ain't smelling it. But we were eight miles from a sanitation place. And she was smelling. You hear me? You talk about a guy? She was smelling the sanitation place. I didn't smell it till we got closer in. And when we passed it, I knew what it was. And she just looked at me. I said, God, I thank you. He said she wouldn't be able to taste. She had blisters in her mouth. She couldn't even swallow. She was in the hospital. And I came to the hospital, and she said, Mom, I want to go home. And I told her, I said, your doctor's not letting you go home. And I told her, I said, all Mama know to do is pray. That's all I know to do is pray. And do you know I begin to pray? I prayed for and I left out the door because I had to go into San Francisco for a meeting and come back. And when I got back, before I got off the bar in Hayward to go to the hospital, she called me. She said, Mama, can you stop by Jack in the Box and get me a teriyaki chicken bowl? I said, okay. You know, I'm thinking in my mind. Oh, Lord Jesus, 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 Jesus. What you doing, Jesus? Jesus. I did it. The Spirit of the Lord said, go into, go into Jack in the Box. And I got it. Took it to the hospital. When I took it to the hospital, she began to eat it. Began to eat it. Couldn't swallow before. She couldn't, couldn't swallow. Couldn't, could, couldn't taste, couldn't swallow. The doctor came in 30 minutes later. And he had told her before, if you don't eat, I'm going to put, you're going to get a food too. Mm -hmm. She said, Mama, just like young, she was 19 years old, young. Mama, I don't want the scar on me. Um, I don't know if she's listening or not. She might be watching me saying, oh, God. But I told her, I said, okay, all right. And when the doctor walked in, she had eaten almost all of that teriyaki bowl had eaten it. And the doctor said, well, you can go home. You can go home. But before you go home, I want physical therapist, a speech pathologist to come in and check your 
Check all of this in here. You're swallowing so you won't choke yourself when you get home. So that was a prerequisite for her going home. And you know what, saints of God? The woman was supposed to come that day, but she didn't come. She didn't come. So I had to listen to the tears. Well, I don't want to go home. You, you, just, just be patient. 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 So she had to stay over another day. And when she stayed over that additional day, Elder Jake, Elder James and Elder Williams looking at me intently. <laughs> when she stayed over, the next day, I'm sitting there waiting, sitting there waiting. And the pathologist comes in. She opens the door. And you know, if any of you all work in hospitals or know anything, when they walk in the door, they ask you what your name is so they make sure they're talking to the right person. And the young lady said, Tanya, Tanya Anderson, she said, I'm her, I'm she, I'm, you know, I'm her. And she, she looked through the door. She said, I'm sorry I couldn't make it yesterday. My schedule was full, but I prayed for you. Amen. Somebody she didn't know prayed for her. You be encouraged. Be encouraged. God healed her, and it's been 20 years. And she's never had a recurrence of it. Never. Not one. Because we know God is a healer. That's why I'm saying, hold on to your faith. Wherever you are in God, hold on. You young ladies, I'm looking at you beautiful young women. Hold on to God. Hold on to God. Trust God. Whatever it is, listen to the Spirit of the Lord. And God will give you what to do. He'll give you how to do it. He'll give you how to do it. That was none of this was in my message. This book here is shut. This, 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 this. But see, the Spirit of the Lord, that's why it's so important for us to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the Spirit that endows you with power to tread upon serpents. It's the spirit that leads you and guides you into all truth. I admonish you, if you have never experienced the Holy Ghost, you better get the Holy Ghost. If you never had it, what is the evidence of the Holy Ghost? Speaking in tongues as the spirit give utterance. We can go to Acts. Acts 1 and 2. But God, ask God, come to God. Sanctify yourself, and the God of peace will sanctify you holy. 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 He's a holy God. Even in my prayer, sometimes the Lord will just come, the Spirit will engulf me, and I can feel it. I said, God, you're holy. Hallelujah, glory to God. God, I feel your presence. You've been good to me. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah, glory to God. God, I feel you. I don't want to live without you. I want to feel your presence. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Joy. You can tell when a person don't have joy. They walk down, walk around, your head is down, you're slumped over. Yes. You say hi to him? Hey, what's up? But when you have joy, mm -hmm. hallelujah. When you have children, hey, you can walk in your calling. Whatever it is, whatever your anointing is, whatever it is, you can walk in it. You can just smile at people. I've had people just smile at me. I have this thing about smiling at folk. I smile, Sister Esther. Smile at folks. We met at the bank. Hallelujah, glory to God. I didn't know her from, I didn't know I just smiled and started talking to her. 
Well, Sister Esther, a couple months later, became my member. My member. She's a member here. But you know what? A smile goes a long way. A smile. Just smile. Even if you don't have nothing to smile about, think about something good and smile. Yes. Laughter does you good like a medicine. Uh -huh. I like to make people laugh. Because that's my personality. But it's all right. Whatever it is that you are, whatever God has put in you and created to you, walk in your calling. Walk in it. Walk in it. Even when the enemy, and I'm not going to say he's not going to come against you. He brings all kind of mess to you to throw you off stride. But just know that God is the joy and the strength of my life. He moves all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to lead me, never to leave me. He never fallen short of his word. Why? Because we have to fast and pray. Fast and pray. Fast. Fast. Sometimes it's personal. Fast. You've got to deny what you want. Deny. I've been fasting and every couple days I've been getting on the what you call that thing? The scale. The scale. <laughs> I've been getting it on, getting on it. Saying, well, Lord, if this is the way you wanted me to do it, then this, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I ain't doing no, what do you call them kind of things? They want people to take them, take that stuff. and all. No, no. Discipline and fast. When we fast and pray, whatever it is, that you lay before the Lord, fast and pray. Pray. You ain't got to tell everybody. Mm -hmm. I don't tell folk what I'm praying for. Yeah. Because when you tell folk, see, when you verbalize what it is to other folk, it's in the atmosphere. And the devil hears it. He hears it. But when you take it secretly to the Lord, when you take it to God in prayer, God is the one who does it. Pastor, thank you. Thank you for this word. Anybody need prayer? Prayer. You don't even have to come up if you don't. Just stand. Just stand. Just stand in the house of the Lord. God has met us here. God is good. You have been patient. 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 And stayed with us. But God wants to make a change. Whatever it is in your life, whatever it is, come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Whatever it is that you need, you have need of, you can bring it to God. And I admonish you to take it to the Lord and leave it there. We come to the altar, we get in the prayer lines, we be in the prayer line so much, I'm like, oh, God. My sister Barbara said something. I'll tell you this. She said, we are sick. The church is sick. And I said, Barbara, what you mean? I give her the credit to your grandma. What you mean? She said, can you imagine going to the hospital if you have an emergency problem? You got an emergency. And you go into the ER room, and they check you in, and they send you back there for the nurse and the doctors to see you. Well, how would you feel if you go in there to be treated and the doctors and the nurses are laying up on the gurney. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Focus. Think about it. How would you feel? So church, we, the church is a, is a saint's hospital. We don't even keep going to the ER room. Whatever it is, leave it, leave it here. Whatever your problem is, you don't have to say it to anybody. Take it to God and leave it. Leave it. And when you walk out of here today, do not let the enemy come and bind you with it. He'll bring that same, he'll snicker it back in on you. But don't let 
the devil. You got so much potential. You got purpose. God left you here for a reason. God will do it. God, whatever it is your need is, God knows what you have need, even before you ask. So I say to you today, I say to you, hallelujah, mm, hallelujah, my brother. Yes, God, God has need of you. He has need of you. He has need of you. He has need of you. Hallelujah. 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 It's special he wants you to do. Something special. It's something special. God has need of you. I don't know what it is, but whatever it is, surrender it to the Lord and say, God, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not my will. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not my will, God, but your will. Your will. Your will. Pastor, lay hands on that brother right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for your blessings. God, I thank you. God, I'm turning it over to you. You are the author and the finisher of my faith. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you for strengthening me. Thank you for protection, Lord. Thank you for protecting me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, do it right now. In the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. God has been too heavy. Too heavy for me to bear. But God, I know God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all pray with the members. Go pray with that brother.
light of God. Give them joy, God. Joy, God. Your joy. Hallelujah. Your peace, God. Oh, God, your joy. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for being good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. God, you continue to minister to her. Minister to her spirit. Minister to her heart, gosh. Yes. Oh, God, minister to her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, God, we wrestle God against flesh and blood. Yes, hallelujah, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, but the power of God. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, hallelujah. Oh, God, spiritual wickedness. Oh, God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The prince of the air. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. God, I believe you. Lord, I believe. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe this thing. It is so God. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for being victorious. Thank you for your victory. Thank you for giving us a victory. God, you give us a victory. Oh, God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My sister. Yes. Yes. God, no. You won't leave here like you can. Hey. In Jesus' name. Found, sick, afflicted. You won't leave here. Then you walk out of that door. God said, I've wiped it away. I've washed it away.
He works it out so quickly. And I don't have any, I'm not asking you for no money either. Some people want your money. Give me $5,000. And this is what the God knows. I'll give you a word. That's what the word said. And if you walk out of here and you're uplifted, feeling released in your spirit, then the mission accomplished. But whatever you do, seek God. Seek him now while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. He's near. Near to your heart. He's near. He knows. He knows. He knows. And he's going to work it out. I love all y'all today. I'm going to hug everybody in here. Come on, Pastor. It's all new. Praise God. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne for your God and God alone. Because I can look at my hands in total adoration to you. I can sing to you. I just want to say that I Thank you. 